Brian, what do you do when your animals get old? I mean, what's going on with that? Well, guess what? Karma is retiring. Oh, dog! This thing is gorgeous! Jerry finally took it! He finally took it! Yes! Jerry! Jerry's finally eating, guys! Hey, good morning, everybody, and welcome to the vlog! I'm with my guy here, Karma, and I'm going to be totally honest with you guys. A bunch of people have asked, like, Brian, what do you do when your animals get old? I mean, what's going on with that? Well, guess what? Karma is retiring today. That's right. Karma is an amazing animal, but he is definitely getting older. And we just thought that it's probably time for him to retire. Basically, he just starts getting a little bit thinner, even though he's eating really well. And I talked to a handful of my chameleon friends. And at his age, he's probably only got maybe a year left. And I just thought to myself, you know, over here at the Reptarium, he gets handled an awful lot. And I think that it might be better to move him over to BHB and let him have his last year or so just with us and not the stress of having so many people. So today, Karma goes over to BHB and today my friends over at Camouflage Chameleons sent us another nosy bee panther chameleon just like Karma. So it's a little guy but it's going to take Karma's place over here and Karma is going to be treated like he always was before the Reptarium's open. He's going to be our pet at BHB and he's going to have a nice mellow retirement. Just your daily check in on some baby colubrids that are hatching. This is a beautiful clutch of Brooks King snakes right here that hatched out. I love the Brooks King snakes and these are actually from an albino jelly breed absolutely incredible animals and it's so weird with that albino jelly stuff because that gene is such a bizarre gene I would have expected to get some albino jellies or jellies on this because this was actually supposed to be an albino jelly to a jelly clutch but uh, it turns out that they're all normals and hats and look at that little feisty little dude right there these guys hatch out with such crazy attitude come on little monkeys Woo! Oh my gosh. And again, these get pretty large. I mean, you can get a brush king that can get like seven foot long at times. Really strong feeders, as you can see right here. Got some pretty intense attitude. But to be honest with you, really super tame. Once you actually put some time into them, I love Brooks Kings. I mean, they're definitely one of my favorite colubrid snakes for sure. And then we just have a, what do we have here? A hypoplasma scaleless. Ooh, these are some neat little animals here. That plasma is actually lavender and diffuse corn. So it looks like we finally hit some lavender stuff here. This is just a little lavender corn snake here. Weirdly enough, I don't see anything diffused or blood red in here, but I do see a little scaleless corn snake. Unfortunately, it's not a lavender scaleless. I really wanted to hit a lavender scaleless this year, but I didn't hit it. And then it looks like we just have some other lavenders and some normals and stuff like that. But that lavender gene is absolutely incredible. I mean, look at how beautiful that is. And again, the diffused lavender stuff is even more awesome. So uh, that's it. Just a little update on baby cloopers for the day. I suppose the reality of keeping animals is that they eventually get old. I mean, most animals, with the exception of my tortoises or maybe my gators, you know, I'm gonna probably outlive, or at least I hope I do in that case, in the sense that, you know, most of the time the longevity is 20, maybe 30 years, right? Take, for instance, this pinstripe ball python here. She's coming up on 20 years. She's one of my first original pinstripes I ever produced. And you can start to see she just doesn't have the body weight that she used to have. She's just getting old, you know, and as reptiles get old, they start to lose a little bit of body weight, even when they have the same amount of food consumption they just don't look as beefy and that's just the kind of way it goes and again people ask me all the time what happens when that goes down and the truth is is that we just try to give them the best life that they possibly can we love them now just as much as we loved them before and even if they don't produce we still absolutely adore them and this girl and me I tell you we have a history she's produced a ton of eggs a ton of cool babies and I love her to death and hopefully she'll still be around for another you know five or seven years but chances are pretty good her production days are over all right so here's the deal guys over on Noah his channel. Noah came up for a prank for Eric. We know that he's afraid of tarantulas. We kind of spooked him a couple times with tarantula sheds. So we're trying to just up the ante, right? So what we're going to do is we're going to have Bruce take out the pink dough right now and uh, and then we're going to kind of set it up to where uh, we say it got loose, right? And then uh, Noah's going to be in pretty soon and then Noah's going to set it up a little more and then eventually we've got an idea. Anyways, I, I just wanted to tell you I've got the pink dough out right now. Uh, it's going to be funny. I'll put a link in the description for Noah's video because it's going to be absolutely hilarious and uh, it should go pretty well. Beautiful, beautiful animal, by the way. You know, it's been so busy this time of year that we're just showing like babies and hatchlings and cutting eggs and all that stuff, but you know, we're still having to do all our daily maintenance on all of our snakes over here, so the crew is still fast at it, working their way around, you know, cleaning, feeding, watering, all of that type of stuff, so, you know, even when it's cool that we're hatching stuff, the work doesn't stop. What's up, everyone? Glad you're checking in with old Eric here. Just spot cleaning today, you know, there's always something to do every single day. The clubids are pretty messy little animals, especially with us, you know, feeding them and getting them bulk back up for hibernation. 
they're pooping all the time, so I'm going through. I have to add bedding, take bedding out, uh, change water, stuff like that. I'm going through today and peeing all of these. This is probably the most geckos we've ever had at one time. So uh, I've got a pretty big job today. Another animal that is getting a little bit geriatric but to be honest with you she looks really good she's one of my older animals at 21 years coming up on 22 years this fall so uh, she looks really in great shape for her age and Brazilian rainbow boas can live 30 plus years so I wouldn't say she's retired at all I haven't bred her but I think that she could even produce babies to be honest with you but I love her to death and it's kind of cool to think of the fact that I remember when we actually got this animal and I remember her being a baby and all these years later are still staying with her. And that's one of the things I always talk about with reptiles, in particular things that are gonna live 20 or 30,000 years. <laughs> Oh my gosh. In particular, animals that are going to live 20 or 30 years or sometimes a lot more is the responsibility that goes along with that, right? If you're going to get an animal like this, there's a chance that you may have to be caring for this animal 20 or 25 or maybe even 30 years later. I tell you, I love the fact that most reptiles live a long time because it does suck when they finally get old like karma, getting to the end. It's a bummer. I love that animal so much, but I'm going to give him the best life I possibly can for however long he still sticks around. And we got the box in from my friends over at Camouflage Chameleons. I tell you what, I'm excited about this. And again, we're gonna treat Karma just as good as ever. As a matter of fact, he'll probably get even more attention, but just from us and not the whole commotion, you know? Let's face it, guys, even though we take all the precautions in the world, there certainly is an amount of stress that goes into the fact that tons of people are coming through. And uh, especially with an animal like Karma that really spent the first seven years of his life just with us, right? So this animal will get raised here and uh, hopefully will be a little bit more used to the handle and the hustle and bustle and all that type of stuff. Karma has done amazing here. I just don't want to have the last part of his life that way when uh, I can start kind of with something fresh. By the way, this is a really good tack job. You guys did amazing there over at Camera Park. And I've known those guys for quite some time. They have a beautiful amount of stuff. And look at this. Hey, Brian, what a surprise. Welcome to the Camera Fires family. Nosy B Male, Daisy Dance Signs, Erwin Evanstar. Uh, and it has the dates, it's hatching, and all that stuff. And oh, doggy. This thing is gorgeous oh my gosh holy cow whoa, whoa. holy cow guys take a look at this thing it is absolutely stunning oh my gosh again has a little bit different look than karma did and i think it's going to be really good to start with an animal this size and really get it habituated to handling now don't get me wrong it's probably not going to get handled for at least a couple two or three weeks until it settles in and then we'll take it really low we don't want to cause this thing any undue stress that's for sure but it's going to be amazing it's going to have a beautiful big habitat where it can grow and kind of grow up to be an amazing ambassador at here and don't worry karma's not going anywhere again i'll keep them in the vlog and i'll give you guys updates and stuff like that but I think he's gonna be happier back at BHB where he grew up. And we'll get a new nosy bee for the Reptarium. This thing is gorgeous. And again, if you guys are looking for a chameleon, I'll put a link in the description to Camouflage. Like I said, I really have always been super impressed with their professionalism as well as the quality of their animals. So uh, there you guys go, the new addition to the Reptarium. What an absolute ripper. So I'm gonna go ahead and put him in his new home. It's a big home, so we're gonna to have to keep an eye on him, see if we'll have to downsize at some point, but he might do really well in here. Go ahead, buddy. There you go, sweetheart. Oh my God, he's gonna be so good. Look at him, he's just cruising around like crazy. What an awesome animal. And again, you know, having a lot of space might be really good for him. We're just gonna to have to make sure he stays hydrated and fed really well. But this is one of the things we wanna do is really get him habituated to handling, number one, once he gets settled in, of course. And then also make sure that he feeds off of tongs. So we'll be working with him over the next several weeks and stuff like that. But uh, there it is, Karma gets a retirement, he's gone fishing, and uh, this guy gets a new home. Always improving the reptile. And Lori actually asked me to get this tree put up when we walk in the door so what do you think I love it I'm so happy Did and, well. uh, and it's secure too I no. see that. Perfect. No and more I, yep. kids climbing the tree, knocking it over. Perfect. Exactly. We actually had this up a while ago, and we just had it leaned up, and with some fishing line, just had it attached, and kids kept knocking it over. So now it's cemented to the ground. It's to this pole over here. So, uh, you know, I like to make my wife happy, you know? 
Happy wife, happy life. <laughs> now breeding season is over, I'm expecting no more clutches. So today what I'm going to be busy doing is I'm taking care of our baby skinks, I'm spot cleaning them, I'm preparing food for them, and I'm giving them fresh water. <laughs> couple weeks since Ben and Jerry were injured a little bit, Jerry hasn't fed. Remember, Ben used to always eat, and then Jerry started eating. The last couple weeks, only Ben has eaten, so I'm hoping today maybe things will change. I'm gonna go ahead and offer these guys food really quick. There you guys go. You interested? There, there goes Ben. Now let's see if Jerry will eat. Jerry, you wanna eat? The weird thing is here is that, you know, Ben is still in control of that body, as well, so when I touch the body, Ben pulls back. I'm just trying to see if I can get Jerry alone. See, as soon as I touch the body, he pulls back. Come on, Jerry, come on. Jerry just doesn't seem to be interested anymore. Jerry finally took it, he finally took it. Yes, Jerry. Jerry's finally eating, guys. I'm so excited about this, because again, I just know that they were doing so much better when both of them would eat, so I'm super excited. Jerry finally took another rodent. That is such great news. Oh my God, I'm so relieved. I tell you what, look at how cool that is. They're both eating again, so that means they are definitely all set. Oh my gosh, how awesome is that? I want to show you a real quick clutch. Now, I'm gonna be completely honest with you guys, and remember, I cut a clutch, and there was a white snake in it. The mother was a blue-eyed leucistic, which is a lesser in a hat russo and the father was a banana and she pinstripe and the weird thing was there was a white snake in there and it was really crazy and I'll be honest with you I forgot to show you guys I just completely forgot to show you they hatched out and I wanted to show you the results it was like last week uh, so here we are anyways regardless let me just show you right here this would be what would just be a kingpin right so this is the lesser and it's the pinstripe and because it's a blue-eyed leucistic everything either has to be lesser or has to be hat russo and combinations there are things so this is a combination of the lesser and the pinstripe. And then right here, we actually have a pretty interesting little faded animal here. I'm pretty sure this is a banana and she pinstripe hat russo because it's really faded and I've never seen one of these before. It's a pretty interesting animal, but again, the fading kind of takes away from the kind of pop of the animal. Really absolutely gorgeous. Now this would be the opposite. This would be actually a banana and she kingpin. So it's the lesser in the pinstripe instead of the hat russo in the pinstripe. And again, this is a really beautiful snake. That enchi really kind of makes it pop a little bit more. When this sheds and gets a few meals in it, whoo doggy, that enchi brightens things up. It's gonna be absolutely incredible. Again, we have another little kingpin here, just like the first animal we had. This one, again, I think is actually a banana het russo pinstripe without the enchi in it. Uh, just a little bit different color palette to it, but you can definitely see the pinstripe and the het russo in there. And then this is another one that actually is just shed out, so it looks a little bit better. This one is the banana enchi kingpin, which are uh, absolutely incredible. I mean, the fact that you can really see all those colors popping with it. This is a beautiful snake, and the other one I showed you is gonna look just like it when it sheds, but this is the first one that sheds out. Then there's this little monkey here, a white snake, that has a little bit of patterning on it, and I don't know what's going on with that because there is legitimately, theoretically, if the mother was a blue-eyed leucistic, it would be, again, a lesser and a hat russo, and the father was a banana, pinstripe enchi, there's no way you could produce a white snake. It's literally impossible. You can't produce a white snake from that. So this is a complete mystery here. I don't know what the genetics behind this is. Have no idea. Maybe it's one of those just kind of pop out of nowhere type animals that don't make any sense. Regardless, we have a little blue-eyed leucistic here that looks just like its mom. But again, the mom can't reproduce itself because it's not able to do that without having either a lesser or a hat russo or a mojave on the male side, which it didn't. I know I'm probably confusing the heck out of you. The point is, this is a rare animal and it's pretty awesome that we kind of spontaneously produce a blue-eyed leucistic that doesn't seem to somehow make sense. And uh, there it is, guys, the lost clutch that I forgot to update you guys on. I hope you enjoyed it. Well, if you guys were interested in what happens when an animal gets a little bit too old and retires, yeah, they just become our pet and they live their life the best that we can possibly give them. If you want to see some other chameleon stuff, here's a video right here. If you want to check out an awesome playlist and just let the whole thing roll, do that. Hit that subscribe button over here, turn those post notifications on, be kind to someone, and I promise I'll see you guys tomorrow.